All right, everybody, this is Shock. We're going to do a Bible study, and I want to give you guys something free at the end of this video. Uh, go to my website at shockanow.net. That's the top one right there, shockanow.net, right here. And when you go there, scroll down to where it says entire Bible on audio, okay? And if you want to hear the rest of the story here, we're reading from Acts, just go to, start at Acts 10, okay, Acts 10. So let's set the stage. Jesus has, has died on the cross. He has risen from the dead. And now salvation comes to the Gentiles. So salvation comes to the Gentiles also. In the beginning, they thought salvation was only for the Jews. So there's a man, he's a centurion, and he, he does respect God, he loves God. And watch what happens. There was a certain man in uh, Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion. So he's a soldier of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And this part's awesome. It says, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, so the angel tells him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So this angel is sent from God. God sends this angel to uh, go talk to the centurion. And the angel uh, gives him some orders and says, And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now, this is the same Peter that walked on water to, to Jesus Christ, the same Peter that denied Jesus Christ, and then the same Peter, after he sees Jesus risen in the flesh, he gets emboldened, and now Peter is very bold for the gospel. So watch this. <clears throat> he says, He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. So, I don't know if the centurion was praying to God, you know, God, what is your will for me? What do you want me to do? I know a lot of Christians have that prayer also because they feel like God wants them to do something. So, so picture this, the centurion is now going to go visit Peter. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called, who did, the centurion, two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. So he calls like his most loyal soldier and two of his servants. And when he had declared all these things to them, he tells them what happened. He sent them to Joppa. So he sends them on like this mission to, um, to go uh, talk to Peter. On the morrow as they went on their journey... Sorry to leave you in suspense. <laughs> on the morrow when they went on their journey, drew nine to the city. Peter, so so, picture this. You ever see those movies where they'll show one scene of the movie and then they'll flash to another scene in the movie of what's happening on the other side of town? This is kind of like what happens here in Scripture. It says, Peter went up into the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And even in Israel today, you'll see a lot of people will go up to the housetops and pray. And even on the top of the 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 roofs there they'll make like little gardens and things like that put chairs out there and stuff and he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth so he sees like the sheet coming down like, uh, you know how like if you're going to have a picnic, you lay out a sheet like on the lawn or, or a blanket or whatever. And he sees all these four-footed beasts, wild beasts and creeping things that his religion, his, uh, in, in his culture, it was unclean also to eat, right? 
they were unclean animals. So there came a voice to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoken to him the second time, What God hath cleansed, here we go, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou uncommon. And this was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So, watch this. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, and you know what it means, because the centurion, uh, who is uh, basically a Gentile, he's not a Jew, this centurion uh, has found favor with God. God sends him an angel and says, I want you to go ahead and contact Peter. So about that time while Peter is seeing this, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius, remember what we talked about earlier, had made inquiry for Simon's house. And check this out. Notice they're not coming in the gate. It says they stood before the gate. See that? They stood before the gate because it was against a Jewish custom if they were to enter the gate that would actually make Peter unclean and then they have to go through all this ritual to get themselves clean again so they're at the gate and they call and they ask whether Simon which was Peter were lodged there they're like hey is Peter here you know they don't want to come into the gate you know out of respect to Peter right now watch this while Peter thought on the vision because it's all happening at the same time Peter gets it right he's like I think this is what God wants me to do. The Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. So Peter has this discernment like, Okay, this is this is something unique here. I need to go see what these guys want. Arise therefore, this is what the Spirit says to Peter, And get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, and now it gets awesome, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into this house and hear words of thee. In other words, you got a message for the centurion guy, right? Then called he them in. So Peter just totally forsakes this, um, you know, the he, he's not worried about them being unclean and not, not being Jews. He calls them in and lodge them. So he basically takes care of them, feeds them, you know. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. So he, he, now Peter goes to the centurion. And this is a very beautiful story right here. So all of them are going to the centurion. So picture the centurion who was praying and he loves God, he respects God, he fears God, he has this respect for God. And all of a sudden the centurion is going to see Peter, this man of God, coming towards his house. And you could imagine the centurion probably would get overwhelmed at it. It's just like blowing his mind, right? But watch what happens. And as Peter was coming in, just like what I was saying here, Cornelius, this is a centurion dude here, met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. So (laughs) Cornelius is so blown away what's going on, he starts worshipping Peter. But Peter took him up. So Peter's like, no, no, you know, man, it's all right. And he's like lifting him up, you know, from bowing down, saying, stand up. I myself am also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. So evidently the word got out that, hey, uh, this centurion guy saw this vision and now Peter's coming there. So everyone's there. They know something's up. Something's going on. And he said unto them, you know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. So Peter's telling him this. But And, and this part is uh, really good news for you who's watching this video, you and I. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore what intent you have sent me. 
And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. So basically, long story short, Cornelius says, look, I was praying, and uh, you know, this angel told me to send for you. So Peter opens his mouth and he says these awesome words. He says, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. That word I say you know which is published throughout all of Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hang on a tree. And he's speaking of their crucifixion. But more importantly, he's talking about what they witnessed. What did they witness? Here's the heart of Christianity right here. Here it is, guys. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin. So there it is. Peter's talking about how our sins are forgiven. Now, while Peter yet spake, these words the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost so they're blown away by it because they thought salvation was just for the Jews and now even the Gentiles that's you and me my friend um, are able to be saved through Jesus Christ now um, I want to hurry up because I'm running out of time. Um, I want to. So, so Peter goes back, and he goes back to his friends, um, and it says, "But, and when Peter came to Jerusalem, they were that of the circumcision contended with him. So they questioned him. They're like, why did you go into those men that were uncircumcised, and you know they're Gentiles, and why did you eat with them? You know, because it was against the law. But these guys that are questioning him." they they believe peter check this out peter rehearses the matter with them and tells them what happens he talks about the vision he saw he talks about uh cornelius and um he talks about how even he was saying well god i can't eat this food you know because it's unclean and stuff and um let me let me go back here then i remember okay and he says then i remembered the vision and um let's see Oh, here it is. And Peter says, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Check out what Peter says. He's like, look, this is God's will. God says salvation is for everybody, the Jew and the Gentile. And so Peter's like telling these guys, what could I do? I can't withstand God. This is his will, and this is awesome. These people that... He, uh, Peter's telling this to they they're very happy about it when they heard these things they held their peace they didn't argue with Peter and they glorified God saying then hath God also to the Gentiles granted here it is guys repentance unto life the good news is it doesn't matter if you're Muslim if you're Jew if you're a pagan if you're Wiccan if you're atheist if you're Satanist whatever it is we can come to Jesus Christ, we can be born again, and like it says here, repentance unto life is available to all of us. 
through Jesus Christ. So God bless you guys. Don't forget to go right below here, shockanel.net, and get your free Bible. Have a great week.